Well, welcome. Thanks very much for inviting me to talk. Oh, by the way, I am not in environmental sciences. I am oh. in the history department. Oh. I am the director of uh, environmental studies, which is something very different from environmental sciences. Um, <coughs> our own dear Catherine Hayhoe, who couldn't make it today, um, is a uh, has been getting a lot of attention recently. Um, uh, she's been in Time Magazine. She's been uh, interviewed by Bill Moyers just uh, just this summer. Uh, and the reason for that is, I think there is this national fascination with um, a climate scientist who believes in global warming who's also an evangelical. Um, why this should be is not intuitively obvious, because there is nothing about global warming that actually contradicts some, obviously, like, like evolution, contradicts some passages of the Bible. Um, there's no obvious reason why evangelicals should be so resistant to the fact and the science and the need to act of um, global warming. So what is, what is the problem? <clears throat> First of all, let me quickly define evangelical. Evangelical has a specific meaning in the United States that it does not have historically or in other countries. Um, when we talk about evangelicals, we're talking about, in particular, a emphasis on doctrinal purity, which historically comes from Presbyterians. Presbyterians actually originate almost everything that has to do with evangelicalism, even though they are not classically evangelicals. Um, then there is this emphasis on what the Puritans used to call conversion, or today would be called the, uh, the second birth, the need for a new birth, um, an experience of the spirit to be saved plus something that was borrowed from Methodists, who a couple centuries ago were like the paradigm evangelicals, but have really calmed themselves down <laughs> in the, recently. <laughs> um, but they were originally extremely emotional in their services, and so this um, experience of the spirit also became associated with this emotional reaction. The denominations that we associate that would be, I mean, evangelical is not a denominational term, it, you can be of many different denominations and be in, consider yourself an evangelical. But predominantly, uh, you would definitely include Baptists, especially Southern Baptists and Black Baptists, um, and the charismatic denominations, which includes Pentecostals and holiness, um, as uh, evangelicals. I'm not going to be talking much about Pentecostals, the charismatics, even though they speak in tongues, they're not very articulate. So, um, <laughs> Uh, so we really don't, I mean, the only evangelical uh, Pentecostal that I can think of that had anything to do with environmentalism was um, Reagan's Secretary of the Interior, James Watt, who's a perfect example of why we don't really talk about them very much. <laughs> okay, um, now, the classic statement, so being, the, if you want to articulate, go to the Baptists. Uh, and they do give us a classic statement of... Um, the opposition, why there is opposition from uh, evangelicals to environmentalism. Uh, in 2004, which is the most recent statement I can find by the Baptist, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention on environmentalism, they passed a resolution, and it's rather long, so I just excerpted some of it. Um, it states, whereas some, of, some in our cult culture have completely rejected God the Father in favor of deifying Mother Earth, made environmentalism into a neo-pagan religion and elevated animal plant life to the place of greater equal or greater value with human life and whereas the scientific community is divided, of course they're not, but um, you can always find the few that will allow you to say that, uh, on the effects of mankind's impact on the environment and whereas some environmental activists are seeking to advance a political agenda based on disputed claims, which not only impacts public policy and in turn our economic well-being, but also seeks to indoctrinate, that's what we all do here at the university, right? We are all indoctrinating our innocent youth um, on the environmentalism, whereas environmentalism is threatening to become a wedge issue to divide the evangelical community and distract its members from the priority of the Great Commission. Now, therefore, be it resolved that We'll have nothing to do with them, basically. Okay, where does this come from? There are two primary sources for this. One is theological. Um, the, what 
um, characterizes evangelicals is this intense focus on evangelism and salvation. Of course, the Great Commission, which is central to the Baptist um, identity, is in Matthew, it's basically go and preach to all nations. Um, so there is this Great Commission to go out and, and preach, and this is the main focus of evangelicals, which is to um, the need to save every single individual on earth. So um, it's more important than any other aspect. So they were afraid that environmentalism and earth care and all of this is a distraction from this number one issue. Um, they, uh, out of this and out of other historical reasons, the Baptists will have a, have a very individualistic view of religion. A lot of this is historical, comes out of their historical experience. Um, they came out of, uh, originated in the colonial period when 11 out of the 13 colonies in every nation in Europe had an established church. And they resisted this established church and believed, came to believe that the church should be only of the saved and there should not be a church that represented the entire community, which was the idea of the uh, the established state church. Um, Congregationalism or Puritanism in New England, Church of England and the other colonies, uh, and so forth. So there's a sense of apartness from that. There is also a tremendous um, uh, historical experience of being persecuted and repressed, oppressed by Baptists, both by the officials in New England and in, especially in the South where the oppression was and persecution was often violent, thrown into jail, um, whipped, tarred and feathered, rode out town on a rail, uh, and the reaction to Baptists in the South was incredibly violent, as well as official repression. Um, that made Baptists want to have nothing to do with the state and always have um, uh, separated the state. And it was a strong, the, the idea of the wall of separation of the church and state came from a letter of Thomas Jefferson to the, da the Danbury Baptist Church. So that is, um, they have this sort of, therefore, disconnection with the use of the state for social or moral purposes. Um, there is also this, the legacy that evangelicalism became very strong in the South. Uh, in order to do that, they had to sort of promise not to touch certain issues, like slavery, like economic um, inequality, like all of the injustices that were in the South. Uh, they just sort of stayed away from that. And as long as they did that, they prospered, and depression stopped. Uh, and by the 1830s, the Southern Evangelicals were the strongest defenders of the um, slave system. The Southern Baptist Church, of course, is born as a defense of slavery. The Southern Baptist Church would strongly defend segregation and discrimination and so on. Um, so they, the Southern Evangelicals have always strongly defended the status quo, and um, its individualism has sort of merged with the very strong economic individualism of the South, uh, small governments, low taxes, and so on. So there's a sort of merging there. So this, of course, creates a resistance to a lot of different um, environmental solutions that require government action and government regulation. Uh, what evangelism focuses on instead is if we, we have to convert each and every member of society, and once we are all Christians, then all of our economic and our social and our racial and our environmental issues will just go away. So that's <laughs> the way that we'll solve this. Um, consequently, if you look at historically, you can find very few evangelicals who are prominent in the history of environmentalism. Uh, the few names that you can find, these are the, probably the most prominent, John Burroughs, the, the great nature writer from 100 years ago, Wendell Berry, E.O. Wilson from today, tend to focus on, again, on more individual, individualistic solutions akin to let's, we need to change everybody's ideas. Uh, Wendell Berry is all about getting all farmers to uh, give up tractors and go back to horses. Well, good luck with that. Um, e. Wilson is, believes that we all have this um, uh, biophilia that every individual has inside of himself, and if we appeal to that, um, then we will somehow our environmental uh, problems will go away. There's, if you'll, you'll read these guys really long, I mean, they've got a lot of books, 
Um, and I've read a lot of them, but you will not find much in the way of specific policy proposals from either one of them. It's, it tends to be more on this end. So, uh, and also, not coincidentally, the best known environmental skeptics or opponents, I give you a couple main uh, famous names here, uh, have also come from uh, the Baptist Church. Uh, there is also, and how do they become, given this sort of resistance to government environmental solutions, how do they actually become hostile to environmentalism? Uh, if you would go back to 1970, which is the year of the first Earth Day, creation of EPA and all this other uh, sort of thing, uh, there is broad support everywhere for environmentalism. And in fact, the Southern Baptist Convention statement in 1970 is amazing to put side by side. One minute? Okay. Uh, put side by side with the 2004 statement because it's, it's like it comes from totally different people. It's all very environmentalistic. What happened? Well, number one, we have a famous thesis that came out by Lynn White in 1967, published in Science, which asked why is it that the environmental problems all arose in the West, especially in Europe and then America, wide industrialization, water pollution, air pollution, abuse of the earth, all seem to be a Western, came from the West originally. Um, what is different about the West? Well, he, he traces it to Christianity. Christianity is the problem. Christianity caused the ecological crisis due to dominion in Genesis 1.28, due to the fact that Christians took out all of the nature spirits and made nature just a thing for us to use. Um, therefore, Christian, Christianity is responsible. That caused the churches to say, are we, are we responsible? There was a sort of shock uh, at first, a lot of self-searching. Um, and eventually, by the 1990s, uh, 1980s, came up with the idea that, yes, there is some of that Lynn White in Christ the Christian tradition, but there's also a counterbalancing. Uh, Christianity is kind of ambiguous. Um, there is also a lot of positive in the Christian tradition towards environmentalism, which leads to the, uh, the fluorescence of the greening of theology that's been called in the 1990s, um, and the growth of things like the earth care movement and a variety of other specifically religious environmental um, movements. Um, on the other hand, a lot of people said, well, let's give up on Christianity. It's hopeless. Let's go to, uh, well, you know, 1967 is also the year that the Beatles went to Rishikesh, and so there's all of this interest in Eastern religions. So maybe they're greener. Maybe we need to become Buddhist or Taoist or go back to Native American Indians who lived in harmony with the land and so on. And then we'll all have this new attitude that that will um, solve the environmental um, crisis. This, of course, caused a reaction amongst evangelicals. Um, it's like, no, we'll have nothing to do with that. And then it gets, in the late 70s, tangled up with this whole culture wars paradigm that pops up in 78 and 79, um, that there's all this anti-Christian stuff in American society. There is um, feminism and... Uh, abortion and homosexuality and secular humanism and environmentalism and they all get kind of lumped together and ever since then they'd have nothing to do with it. Uh, you, there is some hope in younger evangelicals today. Uh, there's kind of a minority movement that's much more friendly to environmentalism. It accepts the idea that there's global warming and we need to do something about it but it is yet still a very small minority and there's a lot of resistance to even talking about this issue. And that's my take on the source of why evangelicals are hostile to global warming. In roughly 10 minutes. Okay, we still I'm have time for a couple questions. I'm okay. sure there's some. Um, yeah. Mark, what, uh, this comes up a lot, the sense that um, part of the biblical prophecy and fulfillment of uh, the book of Revelations and so forth for the end times and then the second coming of Christ is this depending on which version you follow, is this uh, uh, horrible apocalypse, mm -hmm. right? which, so, so is there, do, do you, is it, is it possible to say that, yeah, there's a sort of, well, bring it on, we need this. I mean, you sort of sometimes hear that argument that that's why, uh, you know, this is all part of God's plan. We have to have this terrible degradation of the environment as part of the, to, to usher in the, the glory time. Well, it, there is that. I just don't, I don't see a lot of it. Um, it's not part of, for example, the Southern Baptist 
statement. Um, and there are some of the parts that I had to admit because it was, it was actually a very long statement talks about emphasizing the individual's responsibility to be a good steward um, and behave responsibly, responsibly uh, and so on. So there's not this sort of fatalism that it doesn't matter uh, that I see amongst the major denominations anyway. Um, but no, I haven't read the uh, Left Behind series or anything like that to see what environmental implications are in it, but that might actually be interesting to do. But yeah, in the end times, God will make a new heaven and a new earth, and our problems will be solved. So if we just wait for miracles, maybe I, maybe, the further we get without doing anything about global warming, the more of a miracle we're going to need. Yeah, Jeff? Um, didn't Al Gore get raised as a Southern Baptist? Yes. Now, uh, but he's not a clear um, example. Uh, he's not a, he comes from a more liberal Southern Baptist tradition, for one thing, and on the other, his mother was Church of Christ, um, which mixes things up. So, <clears throat> but then again, I did read his book, and he is, again, all about, <clears throat> if we all get this proper attitude towards the environment, then our, our solutions will come out. Come, you know, that this, is, this, is, this we need first. So it's all about, Let's evangelize everyone. Once we're all environmentalists, it's you know it's very Baptist. Once we're all saved, once we've all seen the green light, right, then um, our problem. Then we'll start voting the right way, and we'll take care of these problems. So there is a lot of Southern Baptist still in him. Yeah. One more question. Uh, I I wanted to ask you if you can comment why there is such a difference between the uh, Catholic Church position and the evangelical position <coughs> regarding uh, environmental issues. I mean, also Catholic Church was, you know, confronted with mm -hmm. what you said here. So how come that they replied in a different way? Uh, how come they did what? Replied, like, reacting in a different way. Because mm -hmm. I keep reading, you know, they have this, like, it was the, the bishops who actually, uh, uh, you know, said that, uh, Catholic Church has to react to this uh, environmental problem. So, Catholic Church seems to be actually very involved in this pro, uh, you know, environment uh, movement, mm -hmm. while, uh, you know, evangelicals are on the other side. So, how come? Well, the, the Catholic Church <coughs> was slow to respond, <coughs> excuse me, officially anyway. Um, the first encyclical is 1990. Peace with God, Peace with All Creation by John Paul II. That's 1990, it's 20 years after Earth Day. So they were very slow to sort of come around, although you do have um, Franciscans and, and many nuns who are already doing various green things on the, the local level. But if you read the, the statements like Peace with God, Peace with All Creation, the way they, they work environmentalism in is through social justice. Um, the emphasis on, in the Catholic Church, the primary sort of stream is uh, social justice ever since Vatican II. But that is sort of what one of the things that the, being a Christian is all about. And it's very easy, of course, to, to work environmental issues in because the poor are the hardest hit by um, global warming and, and most environmental problems. The rich can kind of insulate themselves. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, but they're not, they're not really at the forefront of environmental activism in any way but they're not hostile anyway. And if they accept science, and they accept, they accept evolution, they accept, you know, there's no resistance to global warming. Um, but they're not activists either, though, yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll um, end it there. Thank you very much for that. Time. Thank you.